Welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I'm joined by Hugo Pinksterboer. Hugo, welcome to the show. I'm uh, very glad to be here. So you were the author of The Symbol Book, which um, for me was like the very first thing I really looked at when I wanted to even think about starting this podcast um, about two years ago. It is just an unbelievable resource for people who are interested in symbols. I'm, I'm glad it still is. When, when I started writing the book, there was um, one thing that I had in my mind that nobody else should be able to improve on the book right away. <laughs> Yeah, like here's a book on symbols. I can do better than that, you know. <laughs> so if you, yeah. if you write the book, it should be the book, and it should be good because you know I'm I'm used to when I do something, I I do something like to the max. Yeah, and if, sure. If you don't, then you'd better not do it, and that 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 goes for writing as well as for drumming, or yeah, perhaps even playing the violin. Yeah, and so we kind of talked a little bit, kind of in in preparation for this about. You know, there's almost too much information for it to be translated into a, you know, an episode about the knowledge about symbols. So I think we're going to kind of come at this from a how the book came to be, how you gathered this information, um, and we'll bring some tips and tricks out um, along the way. But it really, I mean, how do you describe the book to someone who's never even heard of it? Do you call it like a handbook or a resource or just a, a, a like a history book? How do you describe it? It is just um, everything you'd like to know about symbols and probably a bit more. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm absolutely sure that there's tons of drummers who will never read this book because it's just too much information. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, it's really, you need to be, you need to be truly interested in the subject. Yeah. On the other hand, yeah. you don't need to read the entire book, and and perhaps if you read the chapter that you that you that you're interested in, like uh, a chapter on uh, symbol acoustics, wh why does a symbol sound the way it sounds, or yeah. a chapter on uh, how you can influence the sound of a symbol, or the chapter on setups and different ways to to think about that, or well any of the other chapters. Then, then perhaps when reading it, you might be become interested in, in the other chapters as well. Yeah, that's a great point of how it's broken up. Where I like it because um, I I actually did it where through a library I kind of got you know a, a, a digital version of it because for me it was like it was like midnight and I was working on this Zildjian thing and I was like um, just trying to put all this stuff together and. You're by chapter. So so there's like sub there's there's chapters like the companies, historical dates. There's all sorts of things about symbol care and and like you said, there's like the technical stuff, like why they sound like that. So you've got a lot of like company names that and I've been, you know, really looking and researching a lot of stuff for the show, and there's multiple brands that you have that I've never heard of. Um let's go to the the first kind of broad discussion of how did you put this thing together um yeah <laughs> the, the the thing is i i am um, as i was working as a, a journalist for slugware crunt and probably some well a lot of american drummers know the magazine the dutch modern drummer say mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. because they were interviewed by the people from slugware crunt and slugware crunt which means basically drummers journal um, organized uh, lots of uh, festivals in the Netherlands with numerous guests from from Simon Phillips and Steve Smith to Trilo Kurtu, Terry Bozio, and and uh, all these other guys. So uh, I I worked for that magazine and I did all of the jazz interviews and and some of the other interviews as well. And I was responsible for all the instrument reviews, including okay. singles. Yeah. And I was really interested in in the subject and as i said about the book if you do something you have to to do it you know to the max so yeah. when i started doing drum set reviews i started reading you know model drummer reviews and rhythm i think back then and and all of the drummers magazines uh, the internet was not really there back then you know we, we're talking about 1985 or so 
So I, I started reading that, but I also started uh, working one night a week uh, in a little drum store where I did drum set repairs because I felt that that would make me understand more of the, the construction of the, the instrument and questions that people have and the things they break and why they break, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I, I found out, for instance, that, that uh, these, these early, I don't know if they still do that, but the early uh, low budget drum sets always came with, you know, a, a few extra lug inserts, and that 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 seems like a nice gesture, doesn't it? Yeah. But they do that just because these things always break down. You know, <laughs> you strip the thread and then they're gone. So yeah. It's not a nice gesture. It's it's just a necessity. Anyways, um, so I started doing that. I started doing uh, drum set reviews and cymbal reviews and sticks and and what have you, and. I found symbols unbelievably fascinating, even more so than, than drums. Mm. Um, that, was, that was one thing. The other thing was that, uh, you know, I did all these, all these interviews with my, my heroes, including the, the man who inspired me to play jazz, uh, Art Blakey. Oh, wow. And, and that, that, was, that was, to me, that was, that was one of the most memorable events of my life, probably. I, I heard one of his records when I was 16 or so, and, and that turned me into playing jazz. Mm. Then years later, I found out that the man was just alive, you know? Yeah, sure. And that he was actually playing in Holland. And, and two, three, four years later, I, I joined him for a conversation. And we, it was kind of a hilarious conversation because he was quite deaf by that time. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he 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 told a story about how friends of his had bought him a new drum set, and that they asked him to come down into the garden, and they had put his old drum set on fire, and there was this new drum set, something like that. And I said, "Well, that must have been a nice surprise." He said, "What?" I said, "That must have been a nice surprise." And he said, uh -oh. well, "But then he didn't remember what he had been telling." So you know, oh man. <laughs> But that was that, wow. was that was really he was he was really old at that time. Oh, of course, and yeah, he was yeah. Still playing his ass off. I mean, I'm sure. telling you this story, but it's with the utmost respect. Yes, um, it's just a funny story. Yeah. A anyways, so um, and and I met you know S Steve Smith and and Arthur Taylor, one of my heroes, and and Jack D. Junette and all all these people, and. Um, there, there was somehow a desire in me to to do something internationally, so I would not be just you know the guy who interviewed them for this Dutch drummers magazine, but you know to to get out of this this little country and do something worldwide. And it was not that I thought of writing the symbol book because I wanted to to go you know um, international, but it, it was just I found out there there was not a book on symbols. And I thought, well, uh, that's up to me. I'm going to do that. Yeah. yeah. So I talked about that. And then um, I was in touch with Colin Schofield because I used to go to all these, these uh, the music conventions. Uh, I was in touch with Colin Schofield, who back then worked for Zildjian. And I told him about this plan. And he said, well, then you need to come down to Zilchin. And I said, well, I, I don't have a budget, you know, I'm, I'm a part-time <laughs> um, civil servant and I'm a part-time drummer and I'm a part-time drum tech and I'm a part-time yeah. whatever. And he said, no, 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 no problem. We'll get you there. Oh, cool. So the idea was that uh, Zilchin uh, would get me to Boston and then I would write an article on Zilchin. But of course, you know, being a vocational guidance counselor uh, by origin, it was not supposed, of course, to be a Zilchin book or a book uh, mm, yeah. uh, about the opinion of Hugo Pinksterboer on uh, symbols or whatever. It should be a book that provides information that allows you to make your own choices. So yeah. when they had offered me this, uh, I went to Sabian and I said, listen, I'm going to Zilchin under those conditions, can I come to you guys too? And I went then to, to I went to Paiste and Ufib and Istanbul and Minol. That was it, I think. 
mm-hmm. the the main companies at that time, and they all said yeah. okay. So they all got their article and they all paid the tri- you know, for the trip and and the hotel and and what have you. Huh. That's so, awesome. I never would have thought about. That's just cool to know that little bit about it. I mean, it's not like they're paying to have like a, a like a, a slot in the book, but they're just kind of basically saying like, "Yeah, we want to be a part of it, and we understand that you're doing this. We'll help you. We'll help you get there." Yeah, right. You know, because of course it's it's important to the entire industry that a book like that, you know, is there. Because I'm I'm really convinced, and I, I wrote a series of books uh, later on. Uh, called the tip book series um much less in depth uh, like the single book is is as i just said a book for drummers who really want to know everything about this fascinating instrument yeah. um the 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 other books that i wrote are just like you should really know this about your instrument mm-hmm. uh, but it's 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 basically the same approach you know what wh- why does why does one guitar cost like five hundred dollars and the other one fifty or five thousand? Yeah, uh, sure. How do how do the different materials that are being used for a guitar influence the sound? How does the shape of the resonator influence the sound? The how does the profile of the neck influence the playability and the, the shape and the size of the frets? And the same for saxophones and 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 clarinet. And I'm I'm I, I I probably can safely say that I'm the only drummer who ever wrote a book about violins and clarinet and flutes in yeah. tip book drums th- this is the tip book series in tip book drums the, the chapter on the symbols is about like what 10 pages or so yeah and the symbol book is um just looking at 210 pages so that that's kind of a big difference okay. yeah okay yeah, but you do have the thing. I, I like just kind of looking through it here a little bit. I like that it's just very um, like practical as well, like mounting like section 7.1.2. It's like angle of your hi-hat. The angle of the bottom symbol is usually adjustable by a tilting mechanism. It's just like, and then you have a whole description there. It's, if the gap is too small, it will limit maximum volume. It's like it tells you things that you kind of figure out on your own, but you just know that. So yeah. carry on here. So you had just gone to all of the symbol companies, which which really, as we know, that's only a portion of this. That's not by by any means. It's not the history of Zildjian, Meinl, Sabian, and uh, Peisty. It's so much more than that. How did the rest of it well, come together? Of course, the, the visits to these companies taught me a lot more than and just than just the manufacturing process yeah uh, speaking about that you know i would go to um say that the, the the entire process consists of five different steps then company the first company would would say well we're not going to show you step two because that's really you know we don't tell people how we do that when i went to these other companies and they said well we're going to show you step one and two we won't show you step three <laughs> so, you know, at one point you can just fill in the blanks. And of course, I found out <laughs> things uh, just by combining, you know, uh, combining bits and pieces of, of information. Uh, I found out things that I was not supposed to share in the book. And I didn't share them because, you know, <laughs> that's, that's of course, that's not the purpose <laughs> of the book. Yeah, no. it, it was kind of fun. You know, they, they would say, we, we're not going to tell you. And I said, well, okay, you, 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 you don't need to, you know, yeah, because I already know. Um, <laughs> so, so that's, that's about the, the, the production. But they also, of course, told me about the, the, the history of the company, the, the history of the manufacturing process that they use, uh, but also about symbol acoustics and about, um, about testing symbols. And and uh, assessing their sound and and you know, I, I was talking to the symbol experts of the world, uh, yeah. and and that that taught me a lot, a lot. Oh my god, I'm sure. Now let's pause and just say that this book was written and came out in the early '90s, yeah. correct? Yeah. So I mean, that's going on 30 years old. <laughs> it's 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 fun, you know. I'm I'm really happy that it's it's still selling, you know, the thirty oh, yeah. year old book, which is in itself, you know, like really special. Yeah. Um, I think what 
still makes it a valuable book is that, of course, I mean, lots of things have changed in the sense that when I went to Istanbul, there was just one company, Istanbul. Mm -hmm. And later on, split up and when it became Istanbul, Agop and Istanbul Mehmet. Yep. And then under Istanbul Mehmet, you had Istanbul Mehmet and Turkish symbols. And then some people wanted to split and they started their own company. And then now you, you have like a zillion Turkish companies yeah. and, and brands. And there's there's loads of people who started making symbols. I said, I mean, and, and you have the symbols with the holes and the symbols, the, the spiral symbols and, and what have you, and, and new brands and new models. And everybody is making like tons of series. Yeah, uh, which makes it like a, a very um, that, that make it, which makes choosing symbols even harder than it, than it used to be. Sure, uh, but the basics. I mean, it's a bronze disc with a hole in the middle, and the basics yeah. of symbol acoustics and the basics on manufacturing processes and the basics of of everything that you read in the book are still the same. And the same, the same, the same goes for you know the, the books that I did on, on acoustic and electric guitars or violins or saxophones or whatever. I mean, the symbol is an instrument that goes back to uh, the days of the Bible and before. Um, and modern day symbol, as everyone knows, goes back to goes back to to, to Zilchin in 1623. It's hard to have an episode, and I've done them with um, Istanbul Agop and. And Sabian, obviously Sabian's a special circumstance with the Zildjian thing, but where you can't really talk about a symbol book and companies and symbol anything without talking about um, Zildjian yeah. for that reason. If it goes back to the, the 1623 and the special, you know, alloy and all that. But um, one thing that um, I'm actually working on doing right now is more of the... Um, you know, I want to do Peisty, obviously, but I'm trying to get UFIP as well because they have that different system, the kind of spun yep. um, system, and and just learn more about those, uh, like the Italian side of things. Mm -hmm. um, so, did you go to UFIP, or did did you just piece that together from a, a different source? No, UFIP. I, I, I went there too. It was beautiful. You know, I, I was picked up uh, at the airport by Luigi Tronchi. I, I think he's he's still involved with the company. Yeah, I think so. Me up and and uh, we went out to have dinner first. Wow! And work is like the next day. While in in Germany, you come into the company. I I went there by car. You know, it's like like a six hour drive or so. And and they basically say they basically said back then, uh, "How was your trip? Would you like something to drink? And what's your first question?" <laughs> I mean. There's no dinner. There's no romance. <laughs> <laughs> it is like that. It's like, and these countries are, you know, you, you go from Minel to UFIP in, in, in maybe a 12 hour drive or so. They're neighbors, oh, yeah. you know, but cultures are way, way, way different. Yeah. So, that, that is just so different from, and you know, just being in America here, it would obviously be, uh, it's a different story driving from, I feel like you drive from one, you know, New York to California and it's still relatively pretty much the same yeah. thing. But yeah. you, I mean, they're obviously, they're, you're going to different countries. They're different, complete histories and cultures. And um, I heard, I did an interview with Andy Zildjian and he talked a little bit about how uh, Sabian, or I believe it was Zildjian and then Sabian owned the Tosco, uh, how Sabian owned the Tosco factory and they, um, it was just so laid back and there was different, you know, books depending, like, you know, the, the finances, depending on who wanted to read it. <laughs> it was just, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, like bookkeeping and, and things. I mean, yeah. Turkey things have changed of course too. Yeah. Uh, but I remember going there in the, in the, that was like probably in the mid eighties or so late eighties that I started working on the book and, and we were in the car and they would say, uh, Hugo, how much was ticket? I said, how much was ticket? Um, I think 400, you know, or so. Yeah. So his hand <laughs> goes into his chest pocket, comes out with a handful of bills, and, and while driving, you know, he <laughs> hands me the money. And I said, don't you need a receipt or so? He said, no, 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 not necessary. We put in book. Yeah. And There's no, like, invoice. There's and that, that was it. I mean, I mean... That's funny. Culturally, that's, that's so completely different, you know? Yeah. 
I, I, I met all of these people, and I, I'd like to tell something about that too. Uh, sure. But th there was, um, well, let, let's say that the Zildjian people and the Sabian people were not the best of friends. Uh, no. Th that, was, that was really, really, really a big problem. And, the, of course, the two main characters out of that, that, that story um, are, are no longer among us. Mm -hmm. Armand and Robert, but you, I mean, you, you, it would be really hard to find two people as different, you know, as these two brothers. Yeah. The same, incidentally, uh, uh, was true for uh, Robert and Thomas Paisley. And hmm. uh, they, they were way different from each other also, but they, they didn't split up, of course. Uh, yeah. What always struck me is that you had one guy who was like the, the well, in, in the case of Paisley, Thomas Paisley was the, the, the bon vivant and the businessman throwing yeah. parties and, and, you know, having lots of fun. And, and Robert Paisley was very much into himself and not really easy to get to. And he, he wrote poems in his spare time. And he was the guy who, he was the sound designer. Oh, wow. And then that, and that was in the, in the, in the Swiss village of Notville. And then in the United States, you had, in the city of Norwell, which is mm -hmm. that sounds pretty much the same. You had these two other brothers where Armand was the bon vivant, you know, and, and into the symbols. And and uh, his brother Robert yeah. <laughs> was was like the businessman. Yeah. And Robert was not absolutely not happy with the fact that I was writing a book on symbols. Really? Why not? Uh, he he basically said, and you're a journalist and you're gonna destroy everything and you're gonna talk about everything that we don't want you to know and you're going to spread all kind of information and so he, he was really he was actually really against it but luckily uh, i was good friends with wayne blanchard but you're very respectful of everything and like you said it's a unbiased there's not an opinion there's not really much in the book where you say this is what you're going to want to use like well, you like this and but but on that note what is your personal preference like are you a zildjian guy are you a peisty guy or what, what do you like basically old k zildjians okay and there's a, a 22 and 18 and a pair of hyats the the, the, the hyat is, is pictured in the book the top symbol and um if you put a top, top symbol on on a table and you put the clutch in then the clutch is supposed to make like a, a 90 degree angle with the table mm -hmm. well this is an old k and it it, it, it leans to the right uh -huh. you don't have to look closely to look closely <laughs> to see that <laughs> it's uh, just the doing circles it. the 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 lathing grooves around the cup yeah at the, the groove that's at the bottom of the cup on on one side goes sort of halfway over the cup on the other side and the top symbol is just a bit smaller than the other one and 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 of course all, all of these symbols are self-tilting you know, yeah, the hole is never in the middle, and and what have you. And the, the fun thing is, I I took these these old uh, hiats. Tom Bergman was at my place for a couple of days once, and and he played those hiats. And I said, Tom, I have to get some groceries or whatever. I came back fifteen minutes later, and he was still playing those hiats. You know, hmm. man, he, he really loved them. So I, I took these symbols when uh, with me when I when I went to Turkey, one of my visits to uh, to Istanbul. And I said to Mehmet, can you make these symbols? And they started, you know, trying to mimic these symbols. And they, they were a nice pair of hyas, but they didn't come close. The, the thing is that some of the factory workers had those symbols of me in their hands. They said, you want us to throw them out? Throw them out? Why? <laughs> it's bozook, or it's rubbish. Ah. Oh. And they didn't have any appreciation for the fact that these were like, uh, the, 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 among the most sought after high end symbols, you know, yeah, true old K crooked warped, yeah, printed, what have you, you know. And, uh, so the old K's were were those the ones that were then those old K's would have been made in Turkey, in Turkey. with that, yeah, with. And I heard something, uh, and you would, I mean, again, look, look at who I'm talking to, obviously, but you, uh, so I heard something about how. In the old K factory, there would be something where they would try and I guess there was maybe a stack of symbols and they would shape 
multiple of them at one time and the ones that were lower in the stack didn't get quite shaped as well and those were the ones that got sent to america and the ones that were like the more crisp top symbols would stay either in turkey or or elsewhere and the whatever it was that wasn't quite as you know sharp and clean as the rest of them is what became exactly what you're talking about. And obviously yours wouldn't have been in America. So as I'm saying that, I'm like, well, you probably got one of the different ones, but they left Turkey and they weren't like, it was like a different. I, I, I never heard that. I mean, you have so many conspiracy to theories today. Um, <laughs> yeah. I never heard that story. And, and well, that might've been Andy Zildjian who said that. I can't remember. I got to listen. I'm getting yeah, it all mixed he, up he, now, but he, he wasn't there. And, and what I now you know, right. I've seen, uh, in in Turkey and and how things go there, they they didn't even take. You know, they didn't they didn't go through a process. I, I can't imagine that they did things like that because they just make symbols. Yeah, uh, sure. And nobody, I mean, nobody is going to select. Them. Well, this one is a little bit better, so we'll send that too. They just did yeah. it the way they did it as 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 craftsmen, you know. Yeah. Uh, and what I heard about the, the stack of symbols is that they, to shape the, the cup, they didn't have an hydraulic, a hydraulic press as they do today. So you would have like a, a steel, say, a steel table, like, a, like an anvil with yeah. hollow, which was like the shape of the cup to be. And then, yeah. say, maybe two, three, four, I don't know, symbols were put on top of that table and a, a concave, is that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they would take a large hammer and hit on it a few times yeah so that of course the cup of the lowest symbol would have a different shape than the cup of the symbol of the, of the exactly, higher symbols yes that's and, exactly what i was yeah. yeah and and they and of course these these cups wouldn't be like perfectly aligned in in any sense yeah and and then they would drill the hole. So, well, well, exactly what, what I what I just described about the, the top of the hi hat symbols. I mean, yeah, it goes all over the place. But that sound is 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 unimitable. I mean, it's a truly unique sound. And and I I still feel that. And of course, Zildjian makes these beautiful Constantinople symbols, and 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 everybody's making those kind of symbols. And I think the only way you can truly replicate the old K Zildjian sound is, is, is to make symbols that are not perfectly aligned in any sense. Yeah. But then who's going to do that? Because you're very well aware that probably, I don't know, 60%, 40%, 80% of what you make, you know, can be thrown out. So mm. it would make them really expensive, but this is just a, this is just a wild guess. Of yeah. Who, sure. You know, a long time ago wrote a book on symbols. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. So back to the book here. Um, so you did the brands, there's all that stuff, but I just really think it's 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 valuable and cool that you have the information on, like, it, it's great to learn about all that stuff, but it's it's also got very practical information about, like, symbol care, mm -hmm. about cleaning your symbols, which, I mean, I, when I was a kid, bought some, I forget what it was, it was like a little, like, like goldish, like, tin of some stuff, and I was too young, and I was, like, trying to clean, like, a... I had like an A uh, medium ride, like a, just a standard like Avidus medium ride. And um, and I remember trying to clean it. And I think I was just uh, too young and I didn't know what I was doing. But um, since then, I've never cleaned my symbols ever. And I've heard the debate about it's good to clean them. You know, people will clean them every day. And then I've heard also, you know, you get a certain sound if you never clean them. Um, so what's your take on cleaning symbols? Uh, uh, I, I I don't write about music anymore, not really. Um, sure. I write I, I write on um, um, motorcycles now. I'm the editor in chief of a, an organization, a motorcyclist action group. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it, it's really cool, and uh, it, it's like writing about drum sets or guitars. But now now they have two wheels. And and uh, well, just one look at my motorcycle will tell you all about my symbol cleaning. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I never clean them. You're not going to clean old K Zildjian's. No, exactly. Okay. They, the the, yeah. the, the, the high hats actually were buffed at one time uh, by by someone who didn't know what he was doing, obviously. 
yeah. I, I, I don't mind because I, I like the way, the, the really off way they sound. Um, I, I don't clean them and I don't clean the other symbols as well. I, I, I use, I use, and that's, that's one of my, my big loves, uh, a 22 inch pang, a zildjian. Yeah, sure. I have a, a great, extremely low sounding 16 inch, uh, new K zildjian crash. Um, and I have um, quite some symbols from the, the, the Istanbul factories, uh, like, like Turkish symbols and, and, uh, and Istanbul. It, it just, just like, a few weird right symbols and and uh, when i when turkish symbols started uh you know coming off of the the, the istanbul mehmet uh, company mm-hmm. i said you really ne- need to make some symbols that are different from what the others do um while sticking to the to the to the four main series that you should make in, in my point of view and sure. I asked them to make me a really thin, unlathed right symbol, and they did. And it was a 22 that weighed about as much as in as a regular lathe 20. So it's very, very flexible. And then they made me an 18 like that as well. And it just is it's like a, a very different sound concept. And um, I sometimes like to play those, you know? Yeah. It goes up and down. Variety and cleaning. I'm, I'm, I totally accept that and, and appreciate the fact that people love to play clean and shining symbols. And I also totally appreciate the fact that there are people who don't. I, I don't. That just you saying that there's that's the beauty of the drums is you can see someone who likes to have their tom perfectly flat, someone who likes to have their tom completely you know tilted forward and everywhere in between, mm-hmm. like your symbols or it's just we you know it's a way to express our selves or you know clean yeah. off take off the labels like certain drummers and stuff it's like tuning your 12 inch tom tom might sound way lower than my 14 inch floor or exactly way around or whatever and 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 i love to experiment with that and uh at one point i played with a a very well no no like a, a bebop tune 18 inch drum an extremely high 10 and an, a, a 16 inch floor tone that was tuned as low as it gets. And okay. that yeah. inspires me basically to do other things. You know, it, 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 you, you, you can do whatever you want with a drum set. Yeah. We are, and we are you, free spirits in the musician's world, aren't we? Not- yeah, we are. No one tells us what to do. And <laughs> you, exactly. you tell me to clean my symbol. I'm not going to clean it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you put, you also have a danger. I like that you also say the danger of it's just like when you look at this book, there's just basically everything kind of gets answered where you talk about how like there's almost like a protective film on newer symbols that you don't want to use these things on the the cleaner on because it could it could go away. Um, So and then auto polishing compound ketchup, it leaves ketchup leaves a residue and doesn't like that's just so I remember that. (laughs) Did you experiment? With this stuff, were you out there with like ketchup on your symbols or or a symbol, I should say, or is this just word of mouth? That was probably word of mouth, and it was literally word of mouth because internet was not really happening, you know, in in the late eighties. No, I, I yeah. don't even remember when when I had my first internet connection, but it was. I mean, this book, uh, the, the layout was was done, you know, just you know, sticking pieces of paper to another piece of paper. It was like. With scissors and glue. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've heard that with not so modern drummer, um, you know, famous publication John yeah. Aldridge was on yeah. the show talking about that. Aldridge, yeah, yeah, cutting things out and they're printing it and wherever they can get a printer. And uh, um, so then let me also ask you here one thing that I think is really interesting is the the segment on. Um, cracked and broken symbols mm-hmm. um because this is something that i've never i think i drilled out one symbol i had an a custom that had a crack and i drilled it out to stop the crack but um again i feel like i'm not a very handy person or i feel like i'm more like i don't know like not like i i do more damage again similar so i am also i like i like motorcycles as well mm-hmm. I've done it, but I'm on the other end where I've done it where I've, you know, I'm going to put some air in my tire and I put too much air in and it somehow caught a nail on the actual, Ouch. like the wheel hub and popped the tube and I had to get it all new, everything. So it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, um, yeah, been, been burned. Um, now what's just kind of go tell us a little bit about broken symbols. Cause there's, there's the drilling, um, there's cracks on the edge, there's cutting it off. Like if, if I have a broken symbol, can I make it sound good still? Yeah, it depends on on your definition of, <laughs> of <the> sound. <laughs> Good answer. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm I'm boring. I'm I'm just giving all of these answers. You know that that <laughs> you can't do anything with, or you can use it and do as yeah. with it as you can. Um, seriously, I, I mean, I I know a guy in in Holland who would just like turn uh, 16, 16 inch symbols with a correct edge. He would turn them into fourteen inch symbols, and they would of course be more uh, of a belt type. Uh, symbol sure. uh, after that because the the, the 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 shape the bow relative to the size uh, is different but also yeah. the um you know the the, the symbol is thickest at at, 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 at and at, and around the cup and then it's mm-hmm. thinner towards the edges and if you remove these thin edges then the symbol won't respond as as fast yeah so um but y- y- i mean you can either throw it out or do something radical with it. I, 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 I remember that in the workshop where I used to do these, these little repairs and it's by no means professional what, what I did there, but it was just, you know, I, I would do things and learn things from it. Uh, there was a yeah. Costco that had uh, a crack that came from the outside and went in like maybe an inch or so. Uh, and there was maybe two, smaller cracks in that same area so it, uh, there's actually a photo of that symbol in the book um so there was like a very broad v shape that i cut out of the edge yeah i see uh, it. then i i took uh, four rivets and I, I mounted two rivets on each side because that was of, of course the lighter side of the symbol because there was there was just a section missing there so yeah people would tilt itself you know towards the place where the rivets were not because they would be at the light side. And, and I've, I've used that symbol a lot. And of course, being a right symbol, it, it wouldn't crack that much. Uh, it, it, the, the risk of it cracking more yeah. than it I mean, I, I never cracked symbols. I, I, I'm, I'm, I was a very bad customer for the st- stick industry as well because I actually <laughs> love sticks uh, where the wood tips sort of splinter away so that you get this bit of softer sound. Yeah, exactly. I'm not in the stick breaking or in the symbol breaking uh, area. No, but if you do, which, you know, in your lifetime of drumming, it's bound to happen at least once with maybe a crash or something or um, thicker symbols I know do too. But I, I want to mention too that you you have a little bit here, like a like a, an image, uh, or I guess you'd call it like a, a figure on the page that's that's two symbols where it says you don't if you do cut it out like you know trim out the 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 like a, if a chunk comes off you don't cut it at a point because yep. that creates further cracking yep. which actually you're looking at page 106 now not because i remember the book by heart but i just looked at <laughs> yes. the section i'm on I'm on 106 yeah 106 there's the tosco symbol with the the the, the wide v shape uh, uh, cut if if you if you um, cut out a symbol and you you make sharp edges uh, in in the symbol, so you you don't cut out a a wide V shape, or you um, or say so you should avoid in that V shape that it actually has the the the, the point where the two legs of the V come together. That mm-hmm. should be a smooth um, corner, if you will. I mean, yeah. Uh, if you have sharp edges, the, the the symbol will absolutely start cracking there. Can I? All right. So, and this is, I think I would know the answer maybe, but can you answer why do symbols crack? What is the reason that they crack? What is a symbol that's more prone to crack? You know, just in, in theory, do you, you have any thoughts on that? Um, I think, Symbols crack because they're not played. Cor- they're not being played correctly. Hmm. If you too hard or uh, too hard uh, sticks that are too heavy, uh, or um, drummers that put a lot of stress on the edge of the symbol, uh, you should actually drummers should should 
watch these these beautiful um, videos on YouTube, uh, and where you look for uh, high speed um, high, a high speed camera used on a yeah. cell or a drum head. Yeah, uh, it's all wobbly and it you. It's really if 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 you hit the symbol, you can see that it it, it vibrates. If you want to really see how it vibrates, then then look at one of these little YouTube uh, videos, and and if you understand a bit about you know what a symbol is, if you if you put it on, um, if you, if you mount your your symbols horizontally, and you hit them with your stick under a ninety degree angle, then all of the energy goes into that edge, you know and it has yeah. to go somewhere, and it, it cannot give because the edge. If you hit it on on, on, on this straight angle, it, it has no place to go. So it sure. will probably give up. I mean, Simon Phillips is is somebody who who can you know. <laughs> um, you you never hear people complain about that Simon is playing too softly. He <laughs> can, of course, but he uh, yeah. he can really smack those symbols. He used pretty thin symbols. Um, he he never cracked symbols because it, it's it's the glancing motion. Yeah, it lets the symbol breathe, I guess, or like yeah. lets the yeah. like the energy. It's like I guess it's like the energy has to go somewhere, and yeah. if you don't yeah. let the energy go somewhere, it just it's, it's going to break. Yeah, it's going to give up. Yeah. Now I, I've had some old, super thick uh, Z custom symbols, which I'm 99% sure they don't even make Z's anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and those I had more, I think I had, so I had a crash, a, it was like a 19 inch crash or something where it just split. Um, and I was younger and probably not really, I was probably hitting too hard and doing different stuff wrong, but like is a thicker symbol more prone to crack than a, like, like I just feel like I had more trouble with Z's and I saw more people say Z's would crack, um, but I might have just had a, a bum symbol or something. Um, yeah, it's but it's I, I, maybe the answer is in the book. I I, I wouldn't know at, at this okay. moment, but it's it's you maybe if if you if you would compare it to if you have a glass and you drop it, it'll break. You know, it's it's very stiff and and heavy. If you have a piece of paper and you drop it, nothing will happen. Uh huh. You know, it's wow. It's like yeah. It can it can it can wobble? It can move. So the energy has places to go, and these these uh, uh, heavier symbols uh, are restricted in their movement. Yeah. So perhaps yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not completely sure about that. It, yeah. It is. You really need just to take some loving care. Um, of the of of the instrument, uh, and and that that also yeah. means that you don't tighten them then up. Sure. Um, because then again, if you mount them really tight, the energy cannot go places, so you'll crack. If you don't use symbol sleeves, uh, then you you hurt the symbol from the inside out. There's there's this picture of the symbol with a keyhole in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I can by now safely say that I, I made that keyhole myself not because I didn't have these these uh, these rubber things on my the cymbal stands but uh, I was at this drum shop you know where I used to to do these repairs uh, and I was looking for uh, cracked symbols to make photos of for the book and I'm yeah, looking for sure. a symbol with a keyhole to make a photo of and I, I've seen many symbols with a keyhole in that drum store in my, you know, in the years that I was working there, there wasn't any symbol with a keyhole inside. So I took wow. a lot of the symbols and I got myself a file and I hand filed the <laughs> keyhole into the symbol. <laughs> it's a fake keyhole. It's, it's yeah, a hoax. I did the, whole, the whole book is fake, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fake. <laughs> it doesn't even Man. exist. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And so people know, maybe if you're out there and you've never experienced a keyhole, like, like Hugo was saying, a keyhole is where You've got your symbol, and then in the um, in the in the bell where you actually slide the symbol stand, the hole, uh, you have metal touching metal. And as you progressively play more, it literally just kind of makes like a nodule. Um, 
which you can see if you're if you get the book on page 95 you can see um hugo's uh lie of a symbol that isn't really a key (laughs) um no i'm kidding but it's very common one problem i have sometimes with with like sleeves is i'll have like the sleeve i'm talking probably on cheapo stands because i truly have never ever actually invested in like a nice dw or whatever brand symbol stand i always bought the cheapo ones um which served me fine um but me too the sleeve will be very high up on the threading of the you know arm where the symbol stand the actual you know where the symbol sits so I can never get enough tension down on the um, symbol to get, you know, some control. Um, now I do. That's maybe on one or two of my stands. But um, I feel like that's kind of a common problem where I've even had to take like a knife or like a file and cut off and trim down my my sleeve to be able to get a little bit of control. OK, well, on- I, yeah, I, 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 I never controlled my symbols in that sense anyways. Um, I use yeah. the, the camber T tops on top, so I, I don't use wing nuts. Okay, it, sure. It's too time consuming. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're a busy man. <laughs> extremely busy and playing <laughs> every every week. I'm, I'm no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not playing that much. Um, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I love the T tops because you just slide the symbol over them, and and they're there, and they, you know, the T top is not to keep the symbol on the stand. The T top is there to uh, prevent the sleeve from uh, creeping upwards yeah gotcha so so that that works fine for me and it, it, you know if the sleeve is too long you just use some extra felt if you want to control the symbol to and bring it up and yeah and i would i would definitely suggest to do that with right symbols only yeah uh, because crash symbols really should you know be able to move because if yeah they, if they don't you crack them and and if you if you crack the symbol within the, the the limited time warranty, and you you take it to the store and it goes to the factory, then the, the the people at the factory can exactly tell you how you played it, how you mounted it. They can they can read the symbol. Yeah. And if they read in the symbol that you mounted it too tightly, then uh, the warranty is off. I mean, it's like motorcycle tires. You give you give an expert a motorcycle tire. And he can tell you how you write, you know? Yeah, you're writing like an idiot. And uh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't do, in my case, you're doing something wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I recently, uh, they actually gave me one, not, you know, to plug a, a product here I, I, and that I actually really like. I have a kit here at my house that I, I have it on. Just it's like a smaller little set with a, I just use a ride and a hi hat on it. And um, uh, it's called the No Nuts um, Symbol Sleeve. And Basically, it just slides down and it replaces the whole thing, the whole washer, yeah, yeah, yeah. the sleeve. And and I really like it. I, I always kind of thought I would see people with, I mean, obviously the idea of having a symbol just on there without anything on the top. People have done that for a long time. But this kind of has like a higher um, uh, like sleeve, so it's not going to pop off. Um, okay. The ease of switching symbols using that system of just, you know, pop it on, pop it off is great. There's so many different ways to to do it. And you got the little clippy ones that are, I don't even know who makes those where you squeeze it and they, um, um, they clip on, um, you got guys who use like, you know, dice that are like, you know, looks like they're in Las Vegas, <laughs> like custom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've seen those. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. Those, yeah. I, st- I still read the Dutch drummers magazine, of course, you know, because uh, of course. Yeah. So I get, I get to see, um, all of these news things that new things that that pass by and and some of these things are really old things you know um i remember that i think yamaha came out with the uh the, the boom arm the the, the uh, convertible boom stand where you can actually hide the boom in the top segment of the of the symbol stand ah, you can use yeah 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 exactly stand, yeah and uh, as as a boom stand um and then I was at the the um, the company that back then was the the premier um, drum distributor for the Netherlands, mm-hmm. and uh, in his showroom was a like nineteen early nineteen thirties or so premier drum set. It had that same convertible boom stand, you know. Yeah. So many of these things they they come and they go, and then somebody invents them in, again, or they think they invent them because they never they've never seen that. I'm not accusing anyone 
of copying uh, copying the stuff. But uh, you know, all the weird things. I, I just went through the book, of course, this weekend, and I, I saw that. Then I, I, I remembered. Uh, there's there's a drummer playing for Weather Report, and they were they were looking for a specific type of sound, and then Joe Zawinul said, "Why don't we try that trash can lid?" Hmm. And it actually sounded great. So they, they 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 took it to the studio. Joe's wife was a bit pissed, I think, and they drilled <laughs> hole in the middle, mounted it on a stand, and it worked great. Then, but then it didn't it didn't last that long because the trash went away, as the drummer. Says it, and Joe Zamino has had many drummers. So, at this point in time, I just don't remember who it is in the book. And then a, a little American company actually introduced the trash can lid symbol. Oh yeah! And they had an ad in Modern Drummer, and I was like, "Are you serious?" That ad of that company just appeared only once, and then it was gone. Oh, I see. Okay. So, um, as we get close to time here, I just want to ask you, what are like. Obviously, this book came out a long time ago. It does stand like alone as a piece of, you know, a resource. Since then, obviously, some new brands have come out. There's Dream Symbols, who um, you were talking about the options. This is just a side note. The options of, um, you know, cut the symbol if it's cracked or, or drill it or throw it away. They also do a recycle program where you get a dollar per inch. Yep. Um, yep. But uh, what are some, have you seen anything cool that you're like, like, you know, little symbol mount stuff that if you were to redo it today, that you would want to include in the book? Well, I, I, no, not my, I, I just, no. I mean, <laughs> um, I've been into motorcycles for the past three years and then before in, in all, all of these other things. So, so I read it, but it, my knowledge is, is much more like a passive than active. Got it. Um I would, I would definitely want to shed light on on new uh, developments. Yeah. Um, technically, but, but then again, you know, the basics are still the basics, and 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 these these Constantinople symbols are really popular. Um, Minol makes symbols in that in that same vein uh, mm -hmm. that are extremely popular. Uh, the Turkish people, and, and they still make these symbols in the same way. So, so uh, basically, there's nothing really new under the sun. Yeah, and and many people have requested me like, why don't you do it again? And and I said, well, you know, I, I don't even know how many of these, how many copies of the book uh, have been sold in these past uh, twenty seven years. Uh, yeah. But I can tell you, you can't make a living off of it, really. <laughs> You're not the first, but Jeff Nichols, who did the drum book, has said, he's like, buy it, don't buy it, I don't care, I don't make money off of it, buy it secondhand from a thrift store, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. well, the main, um, main thing for me, you know, that, that was that was always, that was, that always, that, that felt good, of course. I would be at the NAMM show, you know, 20 years after the book uh, came out, and people would probably notice my my name on my you know on, on my little badge and they said you you go you do the symbol hey man thank you and that yeah. was you know and and people of these newer turkish companies uh they would say thank you for putting turkey on the map you know wow. uh, as a symbol making country and and you know it, it was just i i just helped spread the word and and that yeah i, I was i was very i'm just very happy that I was in the position to to do that and to have all these wonderful people uh, helping me with like creating the book and doing lots of work for it, you know. Because nowadays you just uh, look it up on the web, and and then we did all this by you know writing letters and and uh, yeah, writing faxes, and I would be on the phone with the United States of America, and then they said hold the line, and I would sit there. And I was like, like that is two dollars and fifty cents per minute. <laughs> Can you? Please be quick. hurry it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's different now, man. I mean, yep. like right now, this this interview would have cost us like, you know, 50 bucks or 100 bucks. Oh, yeah. Or something. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and I want to say thank you because, uh, you know, you were an early influence on me for doing history research, which it's like you're still my go to book of like, oh, I need to I was going to look up, you know, the history of like there's just those little things like the old uh like sizzlers where you look back and they were these like kind of like things that would come off of the top and go down and the arms. And there's just so much 
there's so much history to all this. Um, and I also want to mention too, just a, as a friend, there's, there's, uh, um, I have a few of the symbols, Ray burn burn symbols. He makes great handmade um, yeah. symbols sure. here. I know Nikki moon does symbols, which I've never played, but, um, I've heard him on about him on multiple podcasts and just, so there are people doing it. You know what I mean? It's still evolving. And I think, uh, it's really cool that people can get into it and it's no longer the, the big four that you mentioned before, you know, Zildjian, yeah. Sabian, yep. Peisty, and Minel. So um, yep. it's a cool time. It, it absolutely is. And one, one last thing, if you, and, and I still get questions of people that say, do you know who made this symbol? Uh, and and I, I hardly ever do. Um, yeah. All I can say, if you have a symbol and you have no clue who made it, 99 out of 100 times, it will be UFIP. Really? Because UFIB, when I was there, uh, I, I got I got a request like that uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, and and uh, then a couple of weeks later, the guy sent me. I found out it came out of um, the UFIB factory, and he included a sheet with stamps, logos, symbol logos that were yeah. sent to him by someone. I I, I don't remember. That. <laughs> and and then I remember that when I was at UFIB, they opened up a drawer, and there were all these metal logo stamps that were used for symbols. They made everything, you know? And often, of course, with a Turkish half moon or a star or both or uh, what have you. They, they made symbols for everyone. And, and now, of wow. course, like there's many manufacturers who make sticks for everyone. Sure. Uh, there's, there's, again, there's nothing new under the sun. So they were like the, uh, there's so many words for it, like white label or yeah. OEM yeah. or stencil. They were just creating, yeah. wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, next to their own symbols. And of course they gave birth yeah. uh, indirectly to the wonderful creations of uh, the late uh, Robert Spitzikino. Yeah, which someone recently, and I got to look up, the. Uh, I usually like to give people a shout out. Someone mentioned to do an episode on him and I'm not as, I wasn't as familiar and I looked it up and I was like, Oh my God, these symbols are like $2,000. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very rare. And I kind of saw a little bit about a brief history, but so that's another one that I'll, I got to find the right guy. Um, there's this Dutch guy, a Dutch drummer who knows, uh, who, who was involved with uh, Roberto. Okay. Well, maybe you can uh, send me his info and get us in touch if you Absolutely. think he'd be Absolutely. good guy on the show. Okay. And then someone, I've had multiple people say you should do a symbol episode. And a few people have said, you need to talk to Hugo. So, Thank you to everyone who did. I can't, it was a while ago, so I'm, I apologize for not being able to remember. Um, and a thank you to Rob Cook, per usual, um, for connecting me with you, Rob Cook of the Chicago Drum Show. Um, give me your info um, and your phone number and stuff. So, man, Hugo, this is just, uh, this is one of those bucket list episodes for me that I've, you know, wanted to do for a year and a half now. So it's been, it's been awesome having you on the show. And I appreciate you taking the time and, uh, I think obviously we've talked about it a lot. So why don't we just tell people where they can get the symbol book? I mean, is it the standard, you know, go ahead and get it on Amazon kind of thing? Is that the best route? Amazon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And if people want, just Google the symbol book and it'll show up. But um, otherwise, or you can look up Hugo and it's P I N K S T E R B O E R. Check out the symbol book online. And uh, that's great. Hugo, thank you for being on the show, my friend. Thank you for having me. And I was actually uh, really surprised that we could talk for over an hour. But <laughs> <laughs> about the, we made it uh, through. So long ago. And it, it, <laughs> it, uh, I'm, I'm going to read it again and again. Oh, awesome. Me too. It's always a constant uh, source for me. So cool. Thanks, man. You're welcome. If you like this podcast, find me on social media at Drum History and please share, rate, and leave a review. And let me know topics that you would like to learn about in the future. Until next time, keep on learning. This is a Gwyn Sound Podcast.